Tony. Thank you for joining us today, everyone, for the budget hearing uh, of the Film Development Council of the Philippines. Of course, I'd also like to welcome Chair Lisa Dino and the staff of FDCP. And also to all the Senate staff who are here, isang magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. For most part of the year, the entire world has been consumed with matters that have to do with the pandemic. In our case, the crises of health and the economy have become twin burdens we now have to bear. But while these grave concerns permeate our every day, we turn to film and other art forms in seeking solace and relief. For some, film and art have become sources of answers to questions and solutions to problems. Many of us may not realize this, but it is in the midst of a pandemic that we find again and more so the important role art plays in our lives in these times of extended quarantine we may have sought film music and literature in our ways of finding something to do but it's also in the art of participating or it's also in the act of participating in art that its transformative value may be felt while it would take a degree of introspection for its transformative power to be revealed in ourselves, there's no doubt that the books of fiction we read and the films we watch impact us in ways that alter how we see ourselves and how we understand the world. This is why I have the pleasure and honor of hearing the budget for the Film Development Council of the Philippines. So may I now call an FDCP chair, Ms. Lisa Dino, for her presentation. Good afternoon, Senator Risa Monteveras. Good afternoon, Senator Aimee. Thank you for the opportunity to present to you the accomplishment of the accomplishments of the FDCP in the last year. And siguro din po no, in the in the last um, four years of um, of my being the head of this agency. So um, as you all know, ang goal tama po si Senator Risa, ang goal po talaga ng FDCP is to support and promote the growth of our domestic film industry. Um, not only locally promoted to our audiences, but also internationally. So the FDCP has been hard at work in uh, promoting our cinema in different parts of the world and also creating um, a commercial platform and distribution platform. So our film may be showcased not just in festivals, but also um, commercially in uh, the territories and in cinemas in other countries. So um, let me show you um, the accomplishments of the FDCP. Um, uh, Ria, if it's possible for us to um, share with our um, senators. Meron ba? Sharing po, ma'am. Ah, okay. So, um, katulad po ng sabi ni Senator, um, you know, the pandemic uh, has really hit us hard. The, F, the, the film sector is one of the hardest hit sectors. And I want to take this opportunity po para magpasalamat po kay Senator Aimee and sa inyo po for helping us uh, be pa, na masama po sa mga mabibigyan ng support uh, sa Bayanihan 2. So, ang sarap po ng feeling na kasama talaga yung film and audiovisual sector sa mga mabibigyan ng ayuda ng gobyerno. So, um, ready na ba tayo? Excuse me, Chair Lisa. Sorry. Opo, may mga pumapasok na ibang audio, so pakimute lang mga kasama kung sinong nakaano. Unmute pa. Salamat. Okay, please please proceed, Chair Lisa. Yes, Pa. Um, um, connecting lang po yung sharing screen, sorry. Um, medyo mabagal po yung pag-ikot ng option. Sige, so... I may know who you sound. I took assistance to uh, set up. Pero yung talagang uh, nag-i-involve ng uh, actual... Uh... Ayun. <laughs> Ayun po. Um, so habang wala pa po yung screen, siguro ako na lang po yung mag... Uh, mag uh, kukwento ng mga nagawa po ng FDCP. So basically nga po, um, ang mandate po namin is to promote the growth of the local film industry. So... Um, we have uh, participated in various international film markets in the last four years. We have created a track for um, our local films to be distribu uh, distributed internationally. We have 
penetrated some regional territories na po, like Cambodia and some uh, countries in Asia, as well as in France and Germany, for some select uh, films that are really geared towards international uh, distribution. We've also partnered with various Philippine posts and embassies all over the world to continuously promote our cinema. We have the Philippine Embassy Assistance Program where we partner with Philippine embassies to for them to create their own Filipino film festivals. Um, sa mga sarili-sarili po nila mga bansa so that they can access and really engage the citizens in the countries um, na pinag-holden po nila ng post. At kami po ang nagpo-provide ng slate of films na maipapalabas po nila sa mga countries na yon And um, mga successful partnerships po namin ay uh, katulad ng partnership po namin with um, uh, Ambassador Cookie Feria uh, last year with their... Um, in, uh, with their Filipino Film Festival in Portugal, it was with the Cinemateca Portuguese. We were able to showcase 15 films for a three-week run featuring six out of our eight national artists. And it, it spanned three generations or three golden ages of Philippine cinema. And it was very successful because uh, that started more partnerships with um, the Film Council in, Portu uh, in Portugal. And... Um, Ang next year naman po is we're going to host naman po some Portuguese films in our local film festivals. Um, Ambassador Nolasco then of Italy also held his very first uh, Filipino film festivals to really show that there is an industry here in the Philippines. Kasi alam naman po natin na napakalaki ng percentage po sa countries in Europe or um, na mga Pilipino ay um, uh, nasa domestic uh, service po sila po may mga domestic um, nagtatrabaho po sila doon. And ang goal po ni, ni Ambassador Nolasco is patunayan na um, uh, napakarami po ng facets about the Philippines at mas marami, marami rin po tayong talento at ganap din po tayong industriya. So, ayan po, um, nandito po, ayan. We will share with you our top 20 accomplishments. Pinasa po namin ito for Sona para po um, to put it in a... Uh, uh, mas may enumerate naman. Sige, next please. Guys. So, yes. So, we can start already with um, the first part of our accomplishments. So, um, here po is... Um, Yung landmark signing po of the FTCP Joint Memorandum Circular. So while we are developing programs to support the growth of the industry, we are also institutionalizing and introducing structural changes para po sa ating industriya. Dahil alam naman po natin na yung working conditions po ng ating mga manggagawa ay talagang um, hindi po, wala po sa standard, very substandard po and it's, been uh, that way for a long, long time. So as we celebrate the 100 years of Philippine cinema, we have to also take care of uh, of our workers by introducing these standards. So last February 7, um, meron po tayong policy ngayon na ginawang reference for the Eddie Garcia bill na nasa kongreso na po ngayon at meron na din pong na-file sa Senate. So this is to give um, and provide minimum health standards and um, better working conditions for our workers. And this is already in effect. So, um, <laughs> thank you po. Ayun po. Um, and then um, we also launched the DEAR program for our displaced workers during the pandemic. This is something that we immediately launched when the COVID-19 um, pandemic happened. We were able to support 5,000 film workers and was able to reallocate 28 million of our funds to support immediately yung mga workers po natin, lalo na po yung mga maliliit, yung mga light men o utility na nangangailangan po ng suporta natin. Um, because, uh, um, because of uh, this, uh, since 2016, the FDCP has been promoting our cinema internationally. We have been participating in markets. And because of this, we easily transitioned um, to the digital platform and nakatulong po siya lalo nitong pandemic dahil um, yung mga pel pelikula po natin, uh, ngayon mas marami pong pelikula ang, na, ang nagkakaroon ng distribution deals with Netflix and other international platforms. Um, Nag-start po yan, pa isa isa um, pagpupunta po kami ng film market, happy na po kami na mayroong dalawang pelikula na ina-acquire ang Netflix. But ngayon, since June, 
we started acquiring 5 to 15 films every single month. So right now po, siguro nasa 70 na po ang mga pelikula natin na nasa platforms na ito. And dumarami pa po siya every month because ongoing po yung mga pakikipag-usap ng ating mga producers sa mga platforms na ito para magkaroon ng, um, ng, ng space yung ating Filipino films, especially because the cinemas are closed. Um, we also launched the Film Location Incentive Program. This is, uh, anti it's called FLIP. We were able to launch it in January 2020. This is our Location Incentive Program to attract foreign productions to shoot in the Philippines. And um, while we have the pandemic, we have two projects that we supported. Almost Paradise is a Hollywood uh, series um, which shot in the Philippines and spent $360 million. Out of that $360 million that they spent in the Philippines, 90% of the workforce were all Filipinos. And we had 80% um, 80, uh, 80 na actors po galing po sa Pilipinas. And it was completely shot in Cebu. So na-activate po yung industry ng Cebu because of this. And we, ha we want more local government to really see this as an opportunity to drive economic uh, growth and um, income in their in their respective um, uh, localities. Uh, meron din po tayong sinuportahang pelikula, a series entitled uh, Survivor Russia. So Survivor Russia has been in the country in the last 11 years, but first time lang po nilang makapag-apply sa incentive natin. So tuwan tuwa po yung line production company. This is um, Mr. June Huban's Philippine Film Studios. They shot in Palawan. And uh, they were able to receive um, a 20% cash rebate from us. Um, ang total spend nila doon sa Palawan ay 39 million. So talagang nakakatulong po ito sa mga local communities po dahil sa pagdating po ng mga productions na ito. And, re and now we have two projects na entering into an international co-production. One is um, with a local producer um, starring Naomi Watts. Uh, the title of the film is No Sebo. And it's going to be shot next year here in the Philippines. And of course, one of the other films is our very own Love Diaz um, with a co-production in UK and uh, in the France. Uh, the, the title of the film is When the Waves Are Gone. So ito po yung mga talagang inaalagaan po natin mga activities because it really promotes international collaboration. We also just concluded the celebration of the 100 years of Philippine cinema. Actually, bukas na po, we have the official closing happening with some of our biggest stars contributing to make this event very momentous. Next, please. Yeah. So nasabi ko na nga po, meron po tayong Philippine Embassy. Um, uh, <laughs> thank you po. <laughs> Ayan. And then um, um uh, I said na po yung sa pay up natin and then um uh, marami po tayong we have supported 32 Philippine consulates and embassies in the last 2 years. So we're very proud because more and more Philippine embassies are really looking at film as their way of um uh, connecting with uh, the different uh, with their constituents and at the same time parang soft diplomacy din po talaga siya sa mga um, iba't ibang mga partners po. Um, we also have the uh, annual celebration of the Pista ng Pelikulang Pilipino. This is pretty much like MMFF but really geared towards supporting independent productions. We have um, in the last three years gathered around 2.6 million audiences already in its um three-year run and for the fourth year of uh, PPP we are going to showcase um, 100 plus films online just so that we can still serve the audiences that have already enjoyed the films coming from PPP. So um, PPP every year is able to gather 154 million in revenue so to support and to um, as box office revenues of our producers. Um, Development is very important in the FDCP. We want to develop more filmmakers, not just from Manila, but from the, re from the rest of the country. So, meron po tayong tinatawag na Sovo Lab. Sovo Lab is Southern Voices Film Lab. This is a film lab dedicated just for the Mindanaoan filmmakers. We plan to actually do um, 
a Visayan version and a Luzon version in the next coming years. And actually, Senator Risa, ito po yung nasuportahan nyo sa binigay nyo pong funding sa amin. Uh, we were able to support seven projects to be made into a full feature film. So they go through an eight-month lab basically to develop the script, to develop the characters, to internationalize or probably make it more um, elevated so that more people, not just people from their region, can understand their story. So, may mga mentors po yan every time na nagkakaroon po sila ng three-day workshop. Tapos, um, ito po, um, we also have a lot of um, uh, film uh, development and skills in, uh, improvement uh, development programs. The Film Industry Conference brings about um, international trends that our local filmmakers um uh, adapt to and uh, they should understand i mean the changing landscape of philippine cinema and global uh, and the global um industry um they have to be updated with that so we just had our film industry conference online and we were able to gather 2000 attendees po um in our four day workshop so nag-aral po sila and nag-attend po sila ng sessions from film financing animation um script development and distribution so nakakatuwa po because more and more filmmakers talaga are learning and understanding that we really have to continuously elevate our skills and really understand what's happening with the world because you know cinema is really a global market so ayan po next please okay ayan na po so um Meron po tayo ngayong um, FDCP Film School. Ito naman po yung mga hindi pa nasa industry. These are aspiring filmmakers, budding filmmakers, living in various regional film communities all over the Philippines. So um, nakikipag-partner po tayo sa mga LGU. We have, uh, it's called the FDCP Film School. Um, sila po ang nag-host with us ng mga workshops. Ang mga filmmakers po natin ay nagpupunta sa mga lugar na ito we have already um, uh, nakaikot na po kami sa 15 regions ng ating bansa at uh, nakapag-hold na po tayo ng workshops sa iba't ibang mga um, schools at estudyante at mga local government units. Ang latest po natin, dinala po natin siya online. We were able to hold a FDCP Film School online with Tagum City and Sorsogon. So we had 200 um, students na nakapag-participate um, po sa mga workshops na kinundok ng FDCP. Um, we always champion, um, ito pong cinema evaluation system natin na um, na suspend na po because uh, it was deemed unconstitutional by the um, by the Supreme Court. Last December po, um, this is supposed to be the fund where we get incentives or we will give incentives to our producers. Um, in the last... Uh, three years, we were able to give, um, yung last year lang po natin is around 113,499,812. Pero in the last three years, well, I think we were able to give more than 300 million pesos in support sa ating mga, uh, sa ating mga producers. Pero yun nga po, um, because uh, unconstitutional na po siya, we have to really look for ways to incentivize our producers. Dahil hanggang ngayon po, of course, si Senator Amy, alam niya po yan, she has produced the most important films in Philippine cinema. Ang laki-laki po ng tax na binabayaran ng mga producers. So maybe um, there's a way po that we can address that. And of course, um, in our effort to really create a statement that regional cinema is Philippine cinema, we have had many 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 um uh programs and initiatives to champion and empower our regional communities we have our program called festival development assistance program that reaches out to the different regional film festivals all over the country so that we can support them in their um organiz uh, organi uh, in their organization and um, creation of these film festivals that really encourages more regional filmmakers to create their films um in their coming from their own um, stories, from their uh, indigenous stories from their localities. So we have supported around 22 regional film festivals na po. At ngayon po, mag-online na rin po sila. So nakakatawa po dahil nakasabay naman po sila sa, 
sa nangyayari ngayon. Uh, Mindanao Film Festival is happening tomorrow po. Uh, Binisaya Film Festival in Cebu and the uh, Northern Mindanao Film Festival in um, Pagayan de Oro is also um, conduct are also conducting their own festivals. So basically, um, in a nutshell, this is what FDCP has been doing, really connecting with our film communities and our filmmakers and just really promoting our cinema and uh, hopefully create a economic track for um, uh, especially because um, kailangan din po talaga natin ng uh, kumita po pagdating po sa mga ginagawa natin mga pelikula. Ayan po. Next, please. So just to present you with our budget for this year, uh, which was approved, uh, which was uh, approved by the DBM. Yes. Yeah. I okay. See again. <laughs> okay. Ayan. Sama ko lang po, sige, singit ko lang po, kasi po, um, meron po kami ngayong isang project, which is very important to us. Um, ito po yung tinatawag na FDCP National Registry. Right now po, the biggest gap of the industry is data and not knowing how many workers or how many are we, how many are the stakeholders in the film industry. And uh, FDCP just launched yesterday the FDCP National Registry, which hopes to really create a vast and verifiable database of the different stakeholders within the sector, from workers to companies to organizations um, to festivals. Um, gusto po nating malaman kung sino sino po ba talaga ang mga kasama sa industriya at pwede pong matulungan ng FDCP. So, marami tayong mga programs kung saan nakakasalamuha po natin sila. So, gusto rin po natin masigurado na meron po silang legally registered po sila sa, sa SEC or sa DTI para sa mga in-extend po nating funding at support ay uh, um, nakakasiguro po tayo na um, uh, ito pong mga production companies na ito ay, ay uh, registrado rin po. And yung mga workers po natin yeah. yes, po. Bagong item yon no? Yung registry. Hindi ko pa nakikita sa sa NEP sa ngayon. Sa um, National Expenditure Program. Actually, ano pa po siya? 2000... 2018 po namin siya ginawa. Pero ngayong year po ito, ngayong year po na ito, talagang um, mas naging relevant po siya dahil dito po namin binis ang mga nabigyan po namin ng suporta. So lahat po ngayon ng mga film workers na nabigyan po ng support ng FDCP, we had a verification process to make sure that these are um, freelancers na nagtatrabaho po sa industriya. And ngayon po, ginawa na po namin siyang app Kasi nga po, because of the support of the Bayanwihan 2 bill, kailangan po natin mapabilis ang um, pag-verify po sa kanila dahil baka mahirapan po ang dole. Dahil ang hirap pong malaman yung mga workers natin kasi palipat-lipat po sila ng work. So gumawa po kami ng sistema. So Chair, ito yung kino sila yung mga kinover ba sa DEAR program for displaced workers? Ito ba yung 28 M for 5,000 workers? Or iba pa? Yes, yung registry. Yes, ah, ito yun. Ito yun. Yes, so, and was this is this cash? So it ito nga ba yung official database ng FDCP for these five thousand workers? Yes, Senator. Um, we have we were able to extend support to five thousand six hundred workers actually, and um, we had two hundred thirty companies who registered um, under the FDCP National Registry. Yes, Madam Chair. Cash to yon. Yes, please, send me. Yes, sorry, yes. Um, very valuable yung registry po kasi at least may pinagsimulan. Ang problema, uh, if I may, Vice Chair, if we can encourage FDC po to um, uh, gather data by uh, determining the quantum of the damage caused by COVID to uh, the industry. Dahil watak-watak yung data, may iba na nasa dole tulad na nabanggit, uh, may mobile fund na talagang poorest of the poor, kumbaga sa industriya. Pagkatapos yung FDCP, humihing, uh, FDCP yung ating uh, film academy, humihingi rin ng tulong with the separate director, screenwriter, and actors, and so on. All the other guilds. So, ang problema natin ngayon, at ito, kausap natin si na Yusek Georgie Aragon sa Dole, kung paano ibibigay yung tulong, kasi nga watak-watak yung data, kung Pwede sana may manguna at ikumpuni lahat ng datos kasi nakakaya.
kahilo siya eh, between COVID, the fallout from ABS, CBN, um, all the other media that have lost their jobs. Eh, talagang uh, kailangan natin ibuo eh, kasi uh, baka hindi pantay pantay ang bigay. Can uh, you suggest a way to put together not only the listings of uh, beneficiaries, but also to somehow measure the impact of COVID on the industry? Um, Chair Lisa, remember nung nag-usap tayo, sabi ko nga, uh, quantitatively and qualitatively, no, ano yung impact nga ng pandemic sa, sa industry? So if, if you want to address that, and then i-link dun sa tanong ni Sen Aimee, so is this registry that way of consolidating the data? Um, yes, makakim bagay yan kasi gusto natin dagdagan sila, no? Kasi they suffer a uh, decrease of almost 36%. Malaking-malaking uh, decrease yan. Pero having said that, how do we help them? We need to justify it. So, um, Chair Lisa, do you have any, uh, uh, let's say, cooperative ventures together with DepEd sa COVID? I know that the teachers are struggling to translate to broadcast yung kanilang uh, mga teaching modules kasi ilalagay nila sa TV, radio, hindi naman sila uh, marunong noon o di kaya ilalagay sa online eh hindi rin sila marunong yun alam ko, nagka-crash course sila nagtutulungan ba kayo dyan? Um, with DepEd po, wala pa po pero we, uh, we already just signed a partnership with the DOH uh, DOH naman po with their videos and their um, uh, advocacies um, FBCPs pro um, proposed a partnership so we can activate the workers who lost jobs and at the same yes. time provide okay. collaboration. The problem, Lisa, is that uh, we actually have a reduction, a small reduction sa DOH. Ang malaking budget, DepEd, dumikit pa kayo sa malaki. Okay. Doon na kayo, doon na kayo magpursige. Kasi talaga, Limpak-limpak ang libro na kailangan i-translate sa TV, sa radyo, sa online, and they have no clue. Hirap na hirap sila. The other group na malaklaki ang budget, uh, yung DA, hirap rin sila sa new drought-resistant agriculture kasi pasok tayo sa Laninya. Gusto rin nila mag-translate ng kanilang mga highly technical na dato sa plant pathology at kung ano-ano. Gusto nila i-translate sa radyo at uh, iba pa. Siguro you can uh, work on that so we can help you also with your collection with your uh, budget para maaumentuhan at hindi naman na uh, 36%. Ang laki na nga ng dagok ng uh, COVID at ng ABS na dagdagan pa ng 36% reduction. And uh, you have a word with those two kasi potential clients ninyo yan. Yes po, definitely po. Actually, DepEd po is part of the council of the FDCP so we Very will nice. definitely That's right. to them. Sana, uh, definitely, hindi po namin alam. So, napakaganda po ng suggestion yun nyo. We'll definitely work on that right away. I Good can talk. look for partners po talaga. The entire summer, nagka-crash course yung mga master teachers. Sinabi ni Secretary Briones, nag-aaral sila maging broadcaster. And ako, kung sino pa ang hindi marunong, kaya turuan na lang ninyo. And I think you'll be able to somehow plug into their ginormous budget. And then um, the other thing was, I wanted to ask you about the collections. Panalo ka last year uh, against Cebu City sa amusement tax. They, uh, the Supreme Court reaffirmed in FDCP versus Colon Heritage the right for quality films to get exemptions from tax or reductions from tax depending on class A and B. Tapos nanalo si uh, Chair Lisa. Ngayon, Nag-improve ba o nabawasan yung amusement tax collection? Paribasa wala naman sinihang bukas ngayon. Actually, Senator, natalo po tayo. <laughs> Nakala ko nanalo ka. Nasa rasyo. Nanalo, natalo po tayo. Um, talagang finalize na po nila na as of December 10, Hello? 2019, hindi na po talaga tayo pwedeng magkolekta. So, 25 million na lang po ang binigay sa atin ng DBM this year just for the back of it. Ate, overturned it, December? Ang pagkalam ko, nanalo ka eh. Ano, nanalo ka. So, ano nangyari? You're left with? Zero. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> We're left with amusement tax. Wala na po. Ay, kami po. Wala na pong, wala na po. Na, actually, ngayon so, po. Na, no new, sabi mo, no new collection. Pero may natira sa'yo? Uh, may natira po sa aming 8 million ngayon. 
yun na po siya. As of, uh, ito po na yung natitira namin from the income that we had last year. So, Allah, asa po balita yan. Tapos, uh, kaaway mo pa si Danny Lim sa MMDA tungkol sa Metro Manila Film Festival. Hindi naman po rin ba? <laughs> ha? Hindi naman po kaaway. <laughs> Siguro po, um, Alam, mga ang hindi... hindi... sakita ninyo sa media eh. Baka nakarinig lang po ng hindi mga hindi magagandang balita. <laughs> But it's not true po na we're trying to get FDC, uh, MMF from FDCP. We respect their process and we respect whatever decision, you know, um, uh, our government is, uh, you know, deciding on pagdating po sa mga ganyan. So full support lang po. Are you going to take action actually? Um, do you intend to take legal action or yun na yun? Um... We checked po with OSG and OSG advised us naman that Chairman Danny Lim is within his man, uh, within his power to, to That's right. remove Ito everyone. Eh. So we respect naman po. While it is unfortunate because um, FD, MMDA sits on our council, it could have been handled in a... In a, in a different venue. Kasi napunta po siya sa social media so talagang ang dami po sigurong nakisawsaw and hindi na po nagkaroon ng pag-uusap. But, you know, alam mo naman, Senator, I'm always for dialogue. <laughs> sige, sige. I think that now's not the time to pick fights or uh, to uh, make uh, or make them endure. But rather, now's the time really to uh, lend a helping hand. So kung maaari makumpune yung datos tungkol sa number, yung actual quantum na nawalan ng trabaho, uh, yun lang ang hihingin ko para may basehan kami na magdagdag sa budget ninyong uh, kakarampot. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Thank you, Senator. Thanks, Madam Risa. Salamat. Thank you. Yes. Salamat, uh, Sen. Aimee. So, we'll be expecting that, uh, Chair Lisa, no? Uh, bilang sagot nga dun sa uh, quantitative and qualitative effect ng pandemic sa industry and then para masuportahan yung gustong uh, isulong namin ni, ni Sen. Aimee. Um, just a last follow-up about the DEAR program. Uh, you know, para ang galing eh. it, it was like your own ayuda na una na kayo sa ayuda <laughs> sa sa nalista yung initial 5600 film workers tama ba yon yes po alam mo senator kung tinetext ka po na, kasi nagset po kami ng hotline so can you imagine you know tinetext po kayo na wala po silang pambili ng gatas hindi na po nila alam kung paano po sila makakahanap ng pang-araw-araw nila talagang You really have to find ways, and we really was. We were just happy that we were able to reallocate. We were actually planning a 50 million a reallocation because um, uh, the celebration of the 100 years of Philippine cinema, you know, had its own allocation, and we wanted that whole budget or that whole fund to be really just for the workers. But um, the DBM, uh, you know felt that they were very conservative about it. Siyempre, they were um, pinul din po nila yung funds nga namin na uh, the whole 78 million was pulled for the Bayanihan and we do respect although talagang marami pa pong nakapila, marami pa po talagang nangihingi ng uh, suporta and hanggang ngayon, wala pa po talagang trabaho. Okay. Oh, so, para, so I wonder kung baka na-anticipate nyo yung Susunod na tanong ko kasi na-check na rin ba ng FDCP kung nakatanggap din ng ilan, kahit ilan dun sa 5,600 mula sa SAP ng Bayanihan 1? Um, uh, isa po sa mga, so if you will check our form, isa po sa mga forms namin na dapat hindi po sila nakatanggap ng ano ng uh, other government support. So we make sure na spread out din po um, ang nabibigay na suporta ng gobyerno. Although we really feel and we've already um, asked Dole for its support that these workers deserve a second wave dahil um, one time lang po na 8,000 ang naibigay namin sa kanila. So um, hanggang ngayon po talagang um, yun nga po, uh, only 20% of our industry has started working and uh, marami pa po talagang kailangan ng trabaho at support. Charlize, did you say 8,000? Akala ko 5,000. Or, or, or am I thinking of the 5,600 workers? But you gave them 8,000 pesos each. Apo. Actually, between 5,000 to 8,000 po siya. Meron po kami, kasi nga po wala pa po itong mga ayuda na to nung dumating po kami. March 23 po, nag-start na kami. Um, 
they get 5,000 if they only lost one job. <laughs> kung kung um, five consecutive, uh, kung, kung five days po yung ma, ma, at least five days po na um, lost work, we are giving them the full 8,000 po na support. So, ganun po yung naging prosesa na. Oh, oh. And 5 to 8, kasi yun din yung range sa Bayanihan 1, di ba? Nasa, yes, binatay um, nyo na lang yun. Okay. Initially po is 10,000 po yan. Kaya lang nung pinasa po namin sa Dole because we wanted to get their ano din, endorsement. Kasi syempre, main function po ng Dole ito. So, um, uh, pumayag naman po sila uh, sa amin. Sinabi po nila yung 8,000 kasi sabi niya, chair, internal pa, hindi pa ito lumalabas. Pero parang 8,000 yung ina-identify nilang amount. So, nag-abide po kami sa standard ng Tapos, Charissa, meron ba kayong gustong idagdag dun sa uh, second question ko na shinair ko sa inyo when, when we talked the other day? Uh, how does FDCP intend to support the Philippine film industry in these times of uncertainty? Um, yun nga po, uh, first, we really have more than, okay, there is a part of support, you know, in terms of the displaced workers. So, ito po yung ayuda. Pero pangalawa pong kailangan na support is to really restart our 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 productions and that is by um, giving them um, support in terms of funding investment um, so that they can already um, uh, continue with their productions so marami po sa kanila ngayon kasi ang uh, medyo naantala po yung mga investment sa kanila dahil lahat po biglang nag-hold ng kanilang mga um, funding no so um, this is the time po where government can actually extend that support para po mag-umpisa na po ulit yung mga production. Kasi ang kailangan po ng industriya, trabaho. So, mas makakatulong po talaga tayo kung mag-uumpisa na po silang magtrabaho. And I hope that the Create PH Film Fund can can jumpstart um, that activity for our sector. Remember, Charlize, nung nag-usap tayo previously, sabi ko nga na initially mukang uh, itong Create PH Films is something really that ano, that we can push no? as, as the budget process moves forward. And dito sa simula nung hearing natin ngayong hapon, you started with some updates, yung highlights ng FDCP even in the past four years. Tapos ngayon also with Sen Aimee, we're talking about uh, papaano masuportahan, masustain in the current uh, situation. And then, you know, looking forward uh, even a little more everybody's talking about new normal so per industry and per sector kailangan disenyuhin what does that look like so if you look forward to the medium and the long term and then on a more permanent basis kapag mas mas stabilize na mas ma advance pa yung philippine film industry what changes in the film industry can we expect in the new normal Ano, if you could, if you could uh, project that scenario, and how will this impact on the industry's various stakeholders? Um, Senator, we expect more formats to come up because um, when it comes to the digital platforms, hindi lang po pelikula ang expect na maging makonsume. So you're talking about not just film content, but really an expansion into um, a more generalized term called audiovisual content because audiovisual content can be um, series, it can be um, short films, it can be all of these contents that is more adaptable and more palatable to the digital platform. So I we, we really foresee um, more filmmakers who are already doing this kind of format to find a space in this um, uh, in this um, uh, technological in this online platforms. So we intend to support more filmmakers who are venturing in that path na hindi po talaga napapansin dati. So we have been, we have had a lot of short filmmakers already. Pero ngayon po may kita nyo short films, it's everywhere. Kasi ang attention span ng mga tao, maliit. And before, hindi yan monetize kasi sa sinihan nga lang po siya napapanood. Pero ngayon, because of the digital platforms, they actually acquire um, and there is a value to the short films that are being um uh, distributed in uh, in uh, in the streaming platforms. Uh, also, animation, documentary, and series. So, documentary po, we are we really have um, a, it's a women dominated um, sector. They are the most amazing documentary filmmakers, and they have been you know um, uh, being showcased in various film festivals. The latest of which is Sheffield in UK with um, Che Escalas. Um, Remnants of a Revolution. Uh, nakikita naman po natin sa Netflix talagang documentary is 
uh, more lasting at hindi po bumababa ang valuation. Kasi... Pero, but, pero Lisa, no, yes, don't lang, Lisa. Sorry to interrupt. Pero kapag document okay. na hahabulin... Yes, sorry, Madam Ma Vice Chair. Sasabihin ko lang, kung uh, documentary ang habol natin, which I think... Uh, the chairwoman Lisa identifies as a real growth sector which doesn't dim diminish in value over time. Importante na mag-umpisa na tayo mag-archive. Nag-effort ako mag-archive kaya lang nawala na. Uh, importante talaga yung archive sa ngayon. Ang tanging may archive lamang ay si FPJ. Uh, yung iba ay talaga wala tayong respeto sa ating kasaysayan. So maybe at some point, uh, at some uh, future date when we have more money and there's less COVID, eh talagang kinakailangan magkaroon tayo ng uh, news, documentary, and film archives. Thank you po. Thank you, Senator. I'm glad you say good to that. Oo, I'm glad Sen Amy segued to that kasi nga, andito nga sa budget nyo, no, yung acquisition of archive storage and media asset management system. So, isa sa mga items dun sa Philippine Film Archive Initiatives sa proposed budget nyo. Oo. And we are continuing what Senator Aimea started. Napakarami po sa archive namin yung mga Marcos Diaries at mga iba't iba pa po mga pelikula at mga audiovisual elements po dahil uh, the PIA deposited to the FDCP most of its um, collection. So, Ibenta ba ng ABS yung kanilang archive? Andun yung karamihan. <laughs> magaganda, magaganda yung news footage nila. It's very, very valuable for future generations. Thank you, Ayun po. Well, nasa budget din po namin na hinihingi yung kahit man lang po yung first phase nung ating uh, Philippine Film uh, Heritage Building. Uh, this would seal and would really create a permanent house for uh, the collections that we currently have. We have 26,000 elements um, uh, from film negatives to uh, beta cams and other materials. And we do hope that we can sustain and maintain um, the quality of, uh, of, of these materials na meron po tayo. Kasi nga, di ba po, we're losing a film a day, baka more. So, gusto po pa namin mag-acquire. So, meron pa pong mga, acquisit, meron pa pong mga um, archive ngayon sa CCP, NCCA. And um, we're in touch with them. We hope that we can um, acquire them kasi um, ang... UPFI po, last year, binigay sa amin more than 1,000 um, uh, reels and materials and we were able to salvage um, uh, yung mga ano po nila, yung mga na-deposit po nila sa amin. At mga, may mga na-discover po kami doon, yung mga bayan ko, kapit sa patalim, no, limitanghere, na-save pa po natin. So talagang masayang-masaya po kami dahil um, may mga pelikula pa po tayong pwedeng ma-save from these archives. Salamat, Chair Liza. Actually, San Aimee, dung huli kami nag-usap ni Chair Liza, we were thinking na if not immediately the whole amount needed for that uh, Philippine uh, Film Archives Heritage Building, kahit you know, over the next uh, two years at least, if not if not more, no? So in in stages uh, oh, or in stages. Sure, uh, Sorry, Vice Chair. Go ahead. Ah, I... Ako kasi properly, kasi nakita naman natin, apakawalang ah, yan natin Pilipino, eh talagang ginagawa natin torotot kada New Year lahat ng lumang pelikula. Ay, Diyos ko po. Opo. Ito po, Senator, buo na po ito. Binigay po ito sa ate. Uh, it was a part, it's a partnership between Tieza, uh, DOT, and the Intramuros Administration. They gave us a 1,000 square meter property po sa loob ng Intramuros. Ah, so, nagdang... Renovation na lang po, Sen. Sorry ah, po. Sen, actual building in existence na pala. Opo, naginawa ah, okay, lang po okay. nilang parang warehouse. So, nakita po namin. Sabi ko, just ko, sana po maibigay man lang sa atin para... Ibigay ang pera ng uh, ASEAN. ASEAN, Asian Film Archive, ASEAN Film Archive, pati pate sa France. Uh, P-A-T-H-E. Nagbibigay ng tulong. Baka, baka makadali tayo. Sige po, Senator. Medyo, medyo, medyo nahihiya humingi ang NCAA, NCCA eh. <laughs> humingi na tayo. Kailangan natin eh. Senator, makapalamukha ko. Sige, susulat po ako dyan. <laughs> <laughs> Or, yeah, hindi tayo, hindi, hindi tayo mahihiyain. Go. Sorry po. Sige lang. 
Ay, tumawag kay Cher. Well, ganito mga hearings, gusto rin maka-facilitate ng gano'n, yung mga problem-solving ideas, mga mga anak ng uh, on the side, no, mga additional solutions for everything we're searching for in in the whole budget. Siguro last follow-up question na lang from me, uh, Chair Liza, dun sa sinabi yung uh, new formats, new audiovisual content, and then which will create spaces for new stakeholders sa ganitong uh, digital scene. Wala namang madidisplace na mga current stakeholders or makakasama sila sa uh, upskilling or pagdagdag ng mga skill sets para maka-adapt sa changed ano na to, landscape na to. Um, upskilling po is very important kasi iba po talagang animal when it comes to meeting international standards and technical requirements of these digital platforms. So marami pong, um, it's actually not being displaced. It's actually just empowering them to understand how they can, um, uh, how they can um, pass the quality control requirements of these platforms. Siguro po in terms of displacement, this has been a controversial discussion, but I do believe that cinemas will always complement you know the the path towards um uh distribution in 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 uh in the streaming platforms so lagi pong pinag-uusapan pag pag nasa digital na ang lahat mawawala na po ang cinema sinihan but you know i i, I do believe that there's a, a value of the uh, in the cinematic experience that can never be replaced by any um uh, other formats po let's share risa agree um, yes I, and i mean let's just follow up lang very quick follow up that day uh, nananalo ang ating mga film sa kung saan-saan mga film festival pero walang bibili for distribution kasi lahat defective ang sound so parating uh, talong-talos sa sound ewan ko yung uh, Dolby yung Dolby nasa 20 na yata tayo nasa 7 parang ganun ganun pa rin ba? ganun pa rin naging famous ang Filipino film for uh, great storytelling and uh uh, disgusting sound. <laughs> Parang ganun eh. Tama ba? Parang ganun pa rin ba? So, I, I, I really, talagang ang grabe yung experience mo with film because that was what, yan po ang inabutan ko. When I Parang came... Pa rin? Um, kaya po yun yung mga ginawa namin. Kaya po may partnership tayo with Netflix in terms of post-production. We've sent um, different technicians in uh, Mumbai, India, so that they can um, uh, ano, upskill and really understand QC requirements. But that's rin funny, eh, that you have to buy the engineering, eh. you have to fit out the sound stage, you have to buy all the Dolby. Pera yan eh. So, paano yun? Meron po tayo talaga. Actually, we have the technology po, pero skill po talaga. I think we really need to upgrade the skills I, of I uh, this right. work. Also, you need to buy all the Dolby on Earth and <laughs> set up the sound stages. Kasi po, anyway. meron po tayong dalawang, uh, meron po tayong dalawa or tatlong facilities dito that yeah, are Dolby Atmos. Uh -oh, certified private. po. Uh -oh. Certified po sila. So, ang problema po talaga is really understanding the nitty-gritty of those deliverables um kasi ang experience po natin locally hindi pa tayo talaga gumagawa ng mga international films so ang experience ng mga local post production um uh, facilities natin ay puro local films eh s'yempre po sa local film natin hindi naman talaga priority yung sound so kailangan talaga po natin na maka-experience pa ang mga local um uh, service providers natin ng international film kasi sila po yung magsiset ng QC and deliverables. Katulad po sa Thailand, um, there is this one production house, it's called White, um, uh, uh, ano yun, Ria? White? So lahat po. White Light po. White Light. So this White Light, um, dinadala po namin sila dito sa Manila every September for our film industry conference. And, um, they are the ones making all of the international, like Hollywood Oscar submissions. It's formed out sa white light in Thailand. Uh -huh. So, yeah. alam po nila ang deliverables. Alam nila yung uh -huh. hindi ng bawat territory. So, dapat po, magkaroon po tayo ng... Oh, man, hindi pa nag-level up. Ang lungkot. Akala ko, okay na. <laughs> alam niyo, Chair Risa, yung Thailand ng galing-galing nila. Ang racket mm. nila, puro trailers lang. Eh, ang mahal-mahal ng trailer. It's so expensive to edit the trailer because you max out all the sound effects and lay in so much post-production work. Ang galing nila yung pilika high value ang tinutukan nila. 
Yes. So, yes. Very interesting. Salamat. Ako, I'm I'm okay now with my questions for the FDCP budget. And Amy, do you have uh, no, I, uh, any I, uh, other uh, questions? Uh, I endorse the findings of this hearing and uh, the passage of the budget of the FDCP with mm -hmm. a plea for augmentation, given that it is one of the hardest hit sectors by the accomplishments and your priorities for year 2021. We recognize the challenges the entire domestic film industry is facing, and we express our support likewise for their budget. And we hope that even as we contend with this pandemic and move towards the new normal, we continue to adapt, to survive, and even to flourish. So having said that, uh, uh, the budget of the FDCP is deemed submitted to the plenary. So salamat, Chair Lisa. Salamat, Sen. Aimee. Maraming maraming salamat po, Senators. Thank you, thank you for your support. Senator, may we go na po? Tapos na po, no? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, Chair Lisa. Of course, you may. At salamat. All right. Thank See you, you Sir You are welcome. Thank you, Ren. Thank you. Tapos na kayo? Kararating ko pa lang. Senbo? Kanina pa kita imiitay magsalita. Nakikita kita dito sa chat group. Sa <laughs> oh, sinara. Ito ko pala ko lang mention eh. Ano, kay Miss Lisa. Senator! Supportive ba? Ayan. I'm so happy. Magaling ka na po. <laughs> okay. Nagkasundo na kayo ng mga, ano, ng mga producers. Ayos na. Nag-uusap <laughs> po. Lagi po. Pinapan po ako na. Senator. Aha. Tinatanong ko nga dyan eh, bakit ang daming nakikipag-away from the producer to Danny Liam to Cebu City? <laughs> Grabe, naiipit tayo dyan sa mga yan eh. Tayo ko, ayusin na lang lahat, di ba? Magtulong-tulong na lang, huwag na mag-away. Agree, Senbong. Ayusin na lang lahat. Ayusin na lang yan. Kayang-kaya naman ni Lisa yan. Ah. Sen, I, we've been reaching out and I hope okay. na... Kahit, ka, kahit ko... gigit na ako, ako gigit na pag ayusin kayo. Okay lang sa'yo? Yes. Ay, sa'yo mag-sendbong. Noted ko yan, ha? Natutulong yeah. kayo sa conflict resolution process na yan. Great. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will talk to them and then, uh, sige, if you, if pagka okay na nga, no, mag-zoom uh, meeting tayo and let's talk together. Ha? Senator, we only have good intentions and I know you know that. So, salamat. Yeah, 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 yeah. mm. Sino ba? Sino ba ang pinakamasakit sa ulo? Sino ba? Sino ba? Sabi mo, totoo. Sino ba? Senator, baka hindi lang po sila sanay sa, ano, sa... Sino na, para tulungan na namin ngayon pa lang. On record ba ka to? On record, hindi na, no? Off, off na to, no? Off the record. Hindi na po, off na. And ako rin mga kasama, mauna ako ko sa I have another budget hearing sa Draco. Okay. Pero salamat, Sen Bong, ha? I'll count on your help for that. Thanks, and I'm me, Charliza, ingat. And I think you're between PMPPA and the FPCP. If we can, you know, if we can bridge that um, dialogue, yeah. napakalaking yeah. bakit. Sige, padaanin ko sa ano, public information and mass media. Iba yung kiting tanong ko, ah. Yung tanong ko. May isa. Okay. Alright. Sige. Sinasabi ko sa Alin? I mean, I see Sen Bong Revilla. Sino pa ba ang nandito na? Uh, LBRMO, of course. And then, nandito na rin ang Phil Rako. Pero walang ibang senator pa, no? Kaming tatlo pa lang. But we can begin, I suppose. Sen, I mean, Sen Bong, uh, magsimula na tayo kung okay sa inyo. Sure, sure. I'm good. Great. Okay. And uh, Comsec Gigi, andito naman yung mga Phil Racom leaders natin, no? Okay, si Chairman Sanchez, andito na sila. 
Good afternoon, Senator. This is the uh, Executive Director, Adil Buen Camino. Yeah, I'm, I'm here to present for your aming budget because we're taking over due to the untimely delays of our chairman. Yes, yes. yes. I'm so sorry. Yeah. My, my sincere condolences uh, to all of you. I'm sorry, I my eyes glanced over my notes for my brief opening statement. And uh, I'm sorry, I was so used to uh, engaging with him in the last year's budget hearing, but I really meant to express my heartfelt condolences no, on the passing, uh, recent passing of Chairman uh, Andrew Sanchez. So condolences to all of you in, in the commission and of course to his family and Friends, sa mga colleagues ko, Sen Senators Aimi and Bong Revilla, um, the Phil Racom just suffered the loss recently of uh, their chairman Sanchez. So, but thank you for your presence, uh, Executive Director. So, just a, a, some brief words before we dive into the proposed budget. So, this is the second year that I'm going to chair the budget of the Philippine Racing Commission, and I'd like to extend my warm welcome. Um, formally you know, on behalf of our whole committee to the representatives of the Phil Racom. And as I said earlier, my heart, heartfelt condolences as well on the recent passing of uh, Chairman Sanchez. We recognize the contributions of Phil Racom to the national budget and hope that uh, in their presentation of the Phil Racom will show us also the current state of the horse racing industry. Perhaps we can also explore in this budget hearing how we can examine digital avenues for promoting the sport, not only to popularize it, but also to raise contributions uh, further for key government programs. So uh, with that, unless uh, Senators Aimee or Bong would like to make some uh, initial statement, um, if not, then please, uh, the floor is yours, Executive Director. Go ahead. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Honorable Senator Arisa uh, Ontiveros, uh, Honorable Senator Aimee Marcos, Honorable Senator May Kababayan uh, Bong Vibilia. Uh, ah, then, so magkababayan din tayo, sir. Taga-Cavite din ako sa Salinas. Mas <laughs> malinas po ako. Resource persons and guests, we have the honor to present to you the Philippine Racing Commission's 2021 budget highlights. The Philippine Racing Commission, created by virtue of Presidential Decree 420, signed into law by then President Ferdinand Marcos on March 20, 1974, and offici officially organized on November 20, 1974 under the Office of the President of the Republic of the Philippines. It, it is the sole agency tasked to oversee the Philippine horse racing industry. Its declared policy is to promote and direct the accelerated development and continued growth of horse racing, not only in pursuance of the sports development program, but also in order to ensure the full exploitation of the sport as a source of revenue and employment. Silicon's <laughs> uh, aims and objectives are as follows. The aim to promote and maintain efficient and biased operation of raising its exclusive of the supervision of betting therein. Other B, to raise public confidence in the sport and minimize infraction of rules and of racing. And uh, letter C is to improve the breed of Philippine horse and to prevent illegal importation of race horses. Pursuant to the President's budget for the year 2021, the Philippine Racing Commission was allocated a total budget of 191,273,000. The following is a detailed breakdown by item of the 2021 versus the 2020 budget of the Commission. For personal services, we were allotted 447,000,000 
193,000 or MOE 144,180,000. We do not have any capital outlay allotment request for next year. The difference of 46% in the MOE was brought upon the discontinuance of our fiscal year 2020 Congress introduced appropriation amounting to 68 million as additional budget for the horse racing incentive pro program. And thanks to uh, Senator Monteveros for that. Slide five, next, next slide. This chart shows how our MOOP is dis distribu distributed as manifested out of the 144 million pesos 120 million or 83 percent of the MOOE is allocated for prices, horse prices. The remaining 17 percent is our regular MOOE. Hence, we give back to the industry as, mu as much as 63 percent of our budget in the, in the form of horse race prices. It's like this. The following shows Nuracom share in relation to the, to the national budget, circular 480, adoption of economy, econo, econo, economy measures in the government due to the emergency health situation. For the current year, we returned 14 million 361,000 of our, our MOOE budget for this continued and offered all our MOOE continuing appropriations amounting to 7,170,489 we also returned 200,000 of our capital outlay in total we returned 21,732,000 our release appropriation. Also in relation to NBC 580 in particular, our Congress, our Congress introduced unreleased appropriation amounting to 68 million as per recommendation of the Department of Budget and Management. 55 million from the same program was discontinued and returned to the government coffers. Uh, this slide shows to us the declining the decline of our registered licenses. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, ask the honorable Senate to pay attention to the, to the number of orders. We have been declining for the past uh, three years, particularly due to uh, decrease in sales. Which, which, is, uh, which was directly affected by the imposition of the train law in 2018. In terms of employment, we have about 4,667 direct, directly employed. So of the total work, workforce that are directly or indirectly dependent to the horse racing industry, from table one, which is which has a total of 1,292, and from table two, which is 4,667, we have about 4,959 or 6,000 direct directly employed to the horse racing industry. So again, uh, we highlight on the decrease of uh, of uh, horse owners because of the waning uh, interest of uh, prospective new horse owners due to the decrease, the decreasing uh, sales and the decreasing uh, share of uh, horse prices from the dividends uh, generated from the total sales. Next slide, please. Uh, I uh, as, as instructed by the Honorable uh, Antiveros, 
we this this slide shows to us the effect of uh, COVID COVID nineteen uh, in terms of uh, the number of transactions that the office has uh, has received uh, up to the date of August thirty one twenty twenty. So in summary, in licenses, the difference of uh, total licensees that applied from 2019 and 2020 is 579. In terms of horse registration or new, or new horses, we have a decline of 315 uh, horses. In, in terms of permit fee, we have a decline of 77 transactions or a total of 971 transactions and licenses uh, or income to, to apply to the Philippine Racing Commission. In terms of, uh, well, the next slide also shows us uh, uh, the application for racing permits because when, of course, when the when COVID hit us uh, in March 15, uh, races was already suspended, and it, it only resumed September 6. And right now we are only uh, conducting once a week races. Before, during normal times, we had six days racing. Now we can only afford one day racing and it is also due to the fact that uh, as of now uh, off-track betting stations have not been allowed by the IATF so only online online betting so in terms of uh, comparative sales again uh, for the past 10 years we have averaged close to 8 billion but it is, it is very evident that on the year 2018, our average, our sales dropped from 7.3 billion, our gross sales, down to 5.5. And in 2019, it was only 4.9 billion. But, uh, of course, due to the increase in uh, in documentary stamps, the government revenue in 2018 increased by 1.5 1.5 billion, and in 2019, it has gone down to 1.3 billion. So we can see that uh, the decrease in uh, in uh, gross sales. Uh, greatly affects the government revenue. So even though it was the objective of the of the government to, to increase the taxes and uh, increase uh, government revenue, it is now uh, also declining. Plus, the industry is greatly suffering from this uh, position of uh, trade law. So next. The next slide shows shows us that uh, during the time of COVID, from March 14 to September 5, uh, the gross sales has already declined by by 2.2 billion 284 million 844 thousand 719. And uh, in terms of government income, this year we cannot be able to deliver 594 million already of the government taxes. So, uh, next slide, please. Secretary yeah, Director, sorry to interrupt po. Um, it's only because uh, Senators Aimee and Bong Revilla and I have to go into session at 3 o'clock. How many more slides do we have from Phil Racom so that uh, we can also discuss with you any questions that we may have? Actually, the following slides uh, 
the remaining slides, uh, Senator, you have already uh, we have already shown this to you last year. So I think it only shows us that uh, in terms of taxes, the Philippines has the highest, uh, highest okay. uh, compared to to the other uh, countries of course. Thank so, you, Edie. In that case, the, I'll open the table now then to questions from yes, the sectors yes, here. Thank Senator. you, sir. Okay, Sen Aimi, take first track, please. Okay, very quickly lang, no? Kasi lahat kami eh, talagang uh, rushing, ano? Um, consistently going down ang Philracom revenue, matagal-tagal na. Is there anything we can do about this? Uh, um, is there a reason? Yung e fighting, yung sabong online, does this siphon away betters in a regulated industry? Do we uh, have any efforts to regulate regulate e fighting, whether under GAB, Philracom, or uh, PAGCOR. And um, my other question be related to that, yung proliferation ng illegal bookies. Kasi naging governor na ako, reklamo namin yan, yung mga LGU, hindi makontrol control Is uh, there anything we can uh, do? My first question is related to Sen Aimee. So if you don't <laughs> mind, I'll cluster it with her two questions. Yung akin, sir, is uh, are there any initiatives to modernize the sport and bring it into the digital age? Uh, are there any initiatives to leverage the internet to revitalize the sport? So please, sir. Yes, yes ma'am. I'll, I'll uh, answer first the first question. Uh, yes, we are greatly affected by other... Uh, gambling because of all forms of of all the avenues of uh, wagering or, or gambling we the horse racing industry is heavily taxed compared to casinos or cup fighting and for that matter the proliferation of uh, of uh, illegal bookies had more incentive because the taxes that that has increased for twenty percent now added by uh, by uh, oh, uh, by illegal bookies uh, is now is now used as an incentive by illegal bookies to entice. Uh, betters to go to go to them so they they can uh, they can give 20 percent additional uh, dividends to their prospective uh, betters so it has it has really the, the train law has really paralyzed us and it has great, great greatly affected our industry and we have had a lot of uh, a lot of appeal to the Congress and to the Senate to help us in this in this quandary. Um, it, it is basically, uh, as we call it, uh, we are now killing the goose that lays the golden egg. Because before, during the time that uh, Philippine race, the Philippine Racing Commission was uh, founded by uh, uh, then-President Ferdinand Marcos, Philippine, uh, Philippine horse racing was one of the highest income generating uh, industries of the government. Wala pa pong uh, pagkor nun, wala pang uh, PCSO, so masyado pong malaki yung tax na nabigay initially, and we are still burning the... Uh, we, are, we are still... The brunt is still uh, being felt up to now. Pero, uh, pero wala ba kayong plano na mag-online? Kasi ang kalaban ninyo, isabong. Lahat siya online. Uh, hindi naman sila regulated. Kayo, may train law na, may charter pa, may kung ano-anong regulasyon. Paano kaya uh, mag-compete ang Philracom sa ganyan? Meron kayong plano, katulad ni, na sabi ni Chair Risa, na mag-modernize uh, kahit pa paano. Uh, and do you have proposed legislation regarding train, for example? Yes, we, we did already, uh, Senator Antiveros. In fact, uh, if we cannot get it in in uh, uh, the reduction or 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 uh, 
going back to the old rates of our taxes, we have a proposal of uh, a five-year moratorium in the imposition. And yeah, well, well we haven't had any updates regarding that. Now, now regarding the the digital uh, betting, uh, I would like to report, uh, your honors, that our bettors are mostly uh, CDE crowd. So, number one, they don't really have gadgets. Para pong problema natin ngayon, ngayon yan dun sa education. Uh, wala po silang mga gadgets, wala pong wifi. So, ang talaga pong avenue, in fact, nung... Hang Pero sir, oh, I see, ang, ang ating populasyon, higit na 70% may, may access to cellphone. So, hindi totoo na hindi sila online or uh, on uh, electrical device of some kind. Ang, kasi po, ma'am, ang uh, Madam uh, Senator, ang aming minimum bet is only 2 pesos to 5 pesos. So, very affordable po to at ang aming talagang bulk Eh, kaya po perfect sana kayo mag-online na eh. Kasi nga, uh, yung may hawak ng maliit na cellphone, kaya mag-2 pesos, 5 pesos, maliit pa yan. Uh, maliit pa yan sa STL eh. Opo. Mer meron na po kaming online, Madam, Madam uh, Senator. And this has been ongoing since 3 years ago. And uh, uh, up to now po, hindi po kami makakapture ng audience dito dahil nga, Doon nga po sa problema doon sa aming mga betors, eh, karamihan po kasi talaga, uh, hindi po sila masyadong bihasa. At hindi lang po, hindi lang po doon sa, sa gadgets, uh, ang isang problema po namin, yung aming mga betors ay are always already aging. So nagkakaedad na po, karam karamihan po dyan ay talagang wala pong capability na sa, sa bagong technology. So, well, it, with regards to, to our... Fair effort, warning lang po ha. Fair warning lang kasi medyo nagmamadali. Sorry to interrupt ha. Fair warning lang po. Kung walang growth potential, ang Philracom, mahirap yatang kumbinsihin ang DOF sa train o di kaya yung DBM sa budget na dagdagan ng government investment in what is a sunset industry. Dapat ipakita natin na lalagana pa to, na marami pang potential sa online at magkaka-interes ang kabataan. So, yun lang ang sasabihin ko na sana magpakita rin kayo ng ating uh, future investment para ganahan naman na dagdagan yung budget ninyo. The other concern, Vice Chair Risa, because uh, I know that uh, Pero, we have a good session. Before you continue, Sen Aimee, important yung point ni Sen Aimee, uh, gentlemen, ha? kasi baka nga dun sa nexus ng developing a younger constituency at yung pagpasok sa internet age, baka dun din yung relief ng Philracom aside from possible uh, uh, moratorium on the application of uh, train sa inyong industry. So, continue, Senaimi. Yes, yes. Uh, amen, amen talaga. Uh, my my other real concern, um, Sen Risa and uh, those in Philracom, the, co the COA, your COA reports, you have been consistently flagged uh, for spending um, and you've been urged to return millions every year for illegal expenditures. Nakakaalarma na siya. Usually travel, food, fuel. Uh, ano bang ginagawa niyo tungkol sa findings ng uh, COA? Kasi parang year on year, yan na naman ang report. Okay. Can I invite po our legal officer, uh, Attorney Cha, to please... Uh, uh, Sila tayo na po, Your Honors, um, Senator Isla, Senator Ayan. Um, yung po na-mention nyo na year, year after year na pa-plan, it's ano po, it's the promotional expenses po. Uh, uh, similar transactions uh, before po na issuehan na po kami ng notice of this allowance and it's currently po on appeal so we are awaiting for the the resolution of the appeal po para po malaman namin yung final decision ng ng director ng po. Um, uh, Sen Aimee, are you? Would you have any more questions? Wala. Uh, pero okay. taon taon may promotional uh, expenses kayo na questionable. Taon taon ba yan? Uh, uh, ano? Ako na kasi two or three times yan eh. 
Yes po, uh, Your Honor. It's... Di ba kayo nagsadala? Nakakatakot yata ang mga koa. Um, we... Ano, all efforts to explain it to our resident auditor. So, ngayon po, our direction is to appeal it sa director po ng COA. Sige. Para ipapalo uh, ito... po yung side namin. Okay, uh, pakilalang isubmit sa amin, Vice Chair Risa, nung uh, reactions, Still responses, man. rectifications na ginawa ninyo tungkol sa COA report, kasi nakakasindak yung makakita ng adverse finding eh. Hindi maganda talaga yun eh. Thank you. Yes, for your honor. Thank you, Sen. Amy. Please do so, Attorney Charlene. And uh, maybe as uh, one of the final questions before Sen. Amy and I have to go into the session, um, gentlemen and Attorney Charlene, no, animal rights is a big issue, especially, for example, in their uh, jurisdictions like California. There are calls to have the sport banned there. So maybe we need to address uh, this issue proactively. Um, in re so related to that, how many horses participate in local races right now how many are injured and euthanized every year and what's being done to ensure their well-being if you'd like to address that question it uh, ma'am um can we give you the actual figures of that because we don't we don't have that right now but in terms of uh Sir, please okay, submit. by the way ma'am i'm a veterinarian by profession and we are we are we are very much concerned about uh, about animal rights. In fact, uh, during our term, we have introduced the anti whipping law, and uh, and also we have also introduced the proper care for hor horses in terms of uh, injuries. Before before there were there was no specific veterinary requirement for injured horses. But now we have required to ha uh, horses to have uh, clearances from their resident vets with regards to their injuries, and we want a, a total clearance, a total report, health report, before allowing them to run again. Unlike before, there was there was just a specific period in in order to rest the injured horses. Now we are being specific as to the real injury of the horse and uh, we require veterinary clearance before letting them compete again. Uh, in, in, with, in terms of the other figures, uh, Sen Sen Senator, uh, we will, we will, we will uh, get back to your office regarding that yes. because we will, we will retrieve it from our, uh, from our veterinary section. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, we, we would appreciate that. I, I think it was also you who who uh, advised our committee last year uh, about those issues. And it, it was just sad to see that data in your presentation that there's a decreasing number of of veterinarians now. Well, I hope that will that will also be addressed as you find solutions about horse racing here in the Philippines moving forward. So, Sen Aimee, if you have no more questions, you're okay. And I don't see uh, Sen Bong Revilla here online right now. Um, in that case, um, uh, gentlemen of the Phil Racom and Attorney Charlene, thank you so much for uh, meeting with us today about the budget uh, of the commission. And uh, until we see each other again in plenary, the budget of the Phil com is uh, deemed submitted. Salamat po sa inyo. Take care everyone no? and stay healthy. Thank you ma'am. Good afternoon Thank po. You. Good afternoon.